Hi folks, Thor News has just released a video asking whether or not this is a neutron star inbound to the sun on NASA's satellite. Specifically, we're talking about Stereo Head and the HI2 imager. And he's talking about this uh, shockwave shaped, bow shock shaped uh, feature in the image. Uh, you can see this image from July 6th, 2014. Let's take a quick listen here to this video and see what he says. And then we have my little neutron star buddy. Now I don't know it is a neutron star. I don't know what it is. All I know is it grows from nothing. So it's not a hair in the camera unless that hair grew from like quantum mechanics inside the lens and is moving across the lens. You can see it's got a bow shock feature. It seems to be traveling more in a straight line towards us than as the things that are orbiting around and Obviously, they had planned to take out the stereo camera very soon. And seeing as how they have not updated this camera since the 6th, it is now the 10th, they may not update it again. And if they do, it may scrub that thing out. But I'm saying, I have no idea what it is. You can't say swamp gas. You can't say lens flare. I do notice on the blue version, they totally scrub it out. But as you can see, it grows from a little speck and then just gets, keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger now i've been sitting on a story for a couple weeks okay so among other things he says this is not a lens flare uh but that he doesn't know what it is well okay if he doesn't know what it is how does he know it's not a lens flare what has he done to establish that fact well let's take a look at the image from july 6 2014 and you can see the feature he's talking about here uh, you can see uh, Venus right here this is Venus and of course it's the brightest object in the field of view and so if you want to rule out a lens flare the first thing you should do is take a look at what the brightest object in the field of view is and see if you can find another image where that same bright object is in the same spot in the image uh, only in an earlier image so if we take a look at what the stereo spacecraft sees from its perspective in space on July 6 at that time Here's Venus, here's the Sun. So let's figure out how far Venus is from the Sun at the time that image was taken. If we draw a line here in Starry Night Pro, we can see that the angular separation between the Venus and the Sun at that time was 47 degrees, 17 arc minutes. And so if we dig through the stereo archive, we should be able to find another image with Venus in the stereo ahead HI2 imager in the same relative place uh, in the image. And to find or to, to do that, we need to find another image where Venus is separated from the sun by that same 47 degrees, 17 arc minutes. So I did some digging and found that the previous date, the late, the last date where that happened, where Venus was 47 degrees, 17 arc minutes from the sun, was actually November 1st, 2012. And so if I draw another line here, what will that mean? Come on. There we go. There we go. We see that uh, once again the angular separation between separation between Venus and the Sun was 47 degrees 17 arc minutes at 609:21 Universal Time on November 1st, 2012. So if we pull up that image, bam, we see that uh, Venus is in the same relative place in the image. You can see uh, this black vertical line. Here from the CCD blooming, it's in the same spot. So Venus is in the same position left to right in the image. So it does have the same angular separation from the sun. And we see the same, whatever you want to call it, shock wave, bow shock shape in the image pointing at Venus because that's what's causing it. It's a lens flare from Venus. I know that's not going to be a popular answer, but that's what it is. Uh, now, I guess I should point out point out that in the image from November 1st, you notice it's a little bit more well-defined overall, and there's this circular feature behind it. But if you actually go back and look real close at the image taken on July 6th, there's that circular feature again. It's just not as obvious, but it's there. Uh, and the shock wave, whatever you want to call it, radiates out from that and points at Venus. Now, as to why it's a little bit more well-defined. Well, if we look at Venus and we look at the apparent magnitude it had 
uh, on November 1st, 2012, is predicted to be about negative 5.39. If we look at the image from July 6th, 2014, it's predicted to be about negative 4.92, so a little bit dimmer, and that's why. The position, the position of this, whatever you want to call it, shockwave lens flare, uh, is dependent upon where Venus is in the image, of course, and we fixed that. That's not a, really much of a variable, it, only uh, north to south there's some variation there, of course. But uh, left to right in terms of angular separation from the sun, it's at the same spot. So the lens flare is also at the same spot, left to right in the image. But the definition it has in the image is dependent upon the brightness the brightness of Venus will uh, will dictate the brightness of the lens flare. And because Venus was a little bit brighter from Stereo's perspective on November 1st, uh, 2012, it's a little bit more well-defined than in the image on July 6th. But uh, we can still see the same general features. It's just a little bit more muted. But that's all it is. It's just a lens flare from Venus. Hope you have a nice day.